get my microphone on. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. I want you to know that God loves you, and I love you. And today, uh, Becky has her brother and uh, Doug and nephew, uh, Danny, with us today. We're glad that they were able to join us. And uh, the last couple of days have been kind of tough days here in the life of the church. Where, uh, we had uh, Richard Tucker's wife's funeral uh, yesterday, uh, Cindy Tucker. And we want you to keep her uh, family, and Richard, and, and their kids and grandkids all in uh, your thoughts and prayers. And then Pastor Ron Darnell passed away and so uh, Friday was his funeral at Grimes Lutheran Church of Hope. And so keep Catherine and, and their daughter Maggie in your thoughts and prayers. But it hasn't been all sadness. Yesterday we were able to celebrate Earth Day. Is that right? Earth Day was yesterday. And even more important than that, Paul Welch turned 57 years old. Very important 
to see like other people um, that have a love for God. Like I didn't know there was other people outside of their set that went to church. And so I went to Wesley Woods and it's just like mind blown. And I thought this is like awesome. And my parents didn't stress about the cost. Um, even if the church raises half of the money, it will go and help, you know, half the camp tuition. I think it's really important for our kids to meet other kids in the state of Iowa. Um, so I'm very blessed because of this church, and I want the other, you know, that our future kids.
Please join us as we are called into worship. Come walk with us. We will join the journey. Let us talk together. We will listen and speak. Christ goes with us. Jesus guides our steps. Let us pray together. Holy One, we are often confused by the events in our world. Come and talk with us. Open our hearts to hear your truth. Plant the seed of new life within us. In the trust of your loving presence, we pray. Amen. Our opening song is, I Love You, Lord. The words will be on the screen. It can also be followed in page 2068 in the Faith You Sing song book. We love you here, the Lord, today. We lift you up and we magnify your holy name. We thank you, Lord God, for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he is not still in a tomb, that he is risen, and that we celebrate the fact that um, by his blood, by his stripes, that we are saved and that we have new life, that we can experience a new birth in Christ Jesus. The Lord, uh, we are a needy people. The last couple of days has been a tough day, tough days for in the life of this church. So we, today we pray for the family of Cindy Tucker. We pray for Richard and uh, their children and grandchildren. Lift them up. Give them strength and assurance. 
We pray for Pastor Ron's family, his wife Catherine and daughter Madeline. Lord, we lift them up to you. In the days and weeks and ahead, they're going to need you more than ever, Lord God. And, and we stand together in faith, believing, and support them as they work through this journey. We're careful, Lord, to give you praise in, in all things. And, and, and we just present ourselves here to worship you, Lord God, as you have given us the confidence as the children of God to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
May we extend out into our community and into the world that we love. In Jesus' name, shall be holy, 
for I am holy. Got too many Bibles here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to recap a little bit what we talked about last week from uh, this first chapter of 1 Peter. Peter is writing this letter to the exiles, uh, to the Roman exiles, after Nero had burned Rome to the ground, uh, and then he tried to blame the Christians for it, and so the Christians had to leave that area, and where they settled is in exile, uh, because they were being persecuted, so they traveled to what we know as modern-day Turkey. And they settled in the different provinces across Turkey. And so Peter is writing this letter to them uh, in exile because of the persecutions that they are enduring. And so uh, what I just read to you out of verse 13, Peter is trying to tell them, look, we serve a holy God. God is holy. And you must live holy. No matter what it is that you're going through in life, live a holy life. Now, I'm going to read to you out of the Message Bible. It's not actually a Bible. It's a paraphrase. But I think Eugene Peterson here in this uh, paraphrase of the Bible catches, catches the essence of what Peter is trying to say. So roll up your sleeves, put your mind in gear, be totally ready to receive that the gift that is coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better than you do now. As obedient children, be yourself, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life. A life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. Make no mistake, folks, here we are talking about the new birth. You know, we've talked about this a lot lately. The new birth. The new birth is made possible by the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus was dead, and then he uh, uh, came back to life. He is no longer in the tomb. He is risen uh, by God's power. Uh, Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave. And, and he arose to new life. And so that is how that we, we call upon the name of Jesus. And that we receive his salvation. That he gives us that new life and is made possible <coughs> by the resurrection. So, uh, he's also saying that God said, I am holy and you be holy. So what does it mean to be holy? It doesn't mean to be so earthly minded that you're, uh, I mean, you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. It means that you uh, live a way of life. And Jim Peterson says that it is shaped by God's life. A life energetic and blazing with holiness. So now we're going to move into verse uh, 17. Verse 17. You call out to God for help, and he helps. He's a good father that way, but don't forget, he's also a responsible father and won't let you get by with sloppy living. I made a few notes here about that. In verse 17, it is a good thing to do when you call out to God. Remember what God has saved you from in your old life to what God has changed you to in the new birth. You once were dead to sin, but when you called upon the name of Jesus to save you, and to heal you, and, and uh, you make a decision to follow after Jesus, 
You have this new birth. You are a new person. New, you have a new, recreated, born-again spirit that changes you from the inside out. And uh, what Peter is, is trying to say, it's, it's a good thing. You people who are in exile, you people who are in a strange land, you are away from family and friends, and uh, you have undergone persecution, don't forget what God has saved you from and what he has saved you to. And that is a new changed life. Verses 18 to 21. Your life is a journey. You must travel with a deep consciousness of God. It cost God plenty to get you out of that dead-end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished, sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought, even though it, was, it has only lately, at the end of the ages, become public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do this for you. It's because of the sacrificed Messiah, who God then raised from the dead and glorified that you trust God, that you know you have a future in God. Folks, I, I feel like that at times in our life, different times, we all feel like we are maybe in a strange and foreign land. I know as our culture changes uh, around us, it feels like not what we have grown up in. It feels like the world has changed around us and has left us behind or pushed us out. Sometimes you just feel like that you are in an odd place in life and nothing around you seems familiar. To me, that is somewhat like an exile. But this Christian life is a journey. It's, no, it's not linear there. Even though the Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way, uh, life takes us in a, in a journey of twists and turns that sometimes feel very unfamiliar and unsettling to us. But all along the way, we have to know that God is with us. God surrounds us. God, uh, he loves us. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, with, through the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed on Calvary. It came, our salvation, this new birth that we have, came at a great cost. Uh, Jesus laid his life down on the cross, and it, it's his shed blood, that uh, uh, paved the way for us to have eternal life and to have new life. So it was a high price. So as we go along life's journey and along life's way, we have to remember that even if we feel like we are in exile at times, that nothing around us is familiar, that the shed blood on Calvary what was that? How did the song go this morning? That it was uh, God's love from Calvary is this shed blood. We recall the events of the Passover where <clears throat> Moses had the Israelite people uh, paint the doorposts of their house with the blood of an unblemished lamb, a perfect lamb. And the plagues would pass over the lentils of their, of their household, and, and they would be saved from the plagues. And so it is with us and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This was no afterthought. This was God's divine plan from the very beginning. And it's revealed 
now to you and me. And it's revealed to us through God's Word. Uh, God always knew He was going to do this for you. It's because of this sacrifice Messiah whom God has raised from the dead. Jesus didn't raise himself up from the dead. No, it was God that raised him from the dead and glorified. And you can trust God and you can know that you have a future in God. Verse 22 to 25. Now that you've cleaned up your lives by following the truth, love one another as if your lives depended on it. Your new life is not like your old life. Your old birth came from mortal sperm. Your new birth comes from God's living word. Just think a life conceived by God himself. That's why the prophet said the old life is a grass life. Its beauty as short-lived as wildflowers. Grass dries up, flowers droop. God's word goes on forever. This is the word that conceived the new life in you. Your new life, your new birth, the old man, the old person within you before you were saved, that's gone away. And so, you should be living into this new birth. Live into this new life that God has proclaimed for us. This life has been made, this new birth has been provided by, by Jesus. By God, by the Holy Spirit. I hope that's not the sign for me to stop preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Just think, a life conceived by God himself. The old man has passed away. It's the old person within you is gone. And now you have a new life. And you know what? You know what he's telling us to do with that new life? He's telling us to love one another like our life depended on it. And it does. It's a radical new life. Loving one another. Last couple of days have been a little tough for me uh, in ministry. Not so much. Well, yesterday was kind of tough because a good friend lost his wife, and we celebrated that life here. Uh, but Friday, uh, I went to Pastor Ron's funeral up at Grimes at the Lutheran Church of Hope. And Grimes, and it was it was a nice funeral. Uh, the young pastor did a very fine job with that. <coughs> and yet, I had this odd feeling that I was somewhere, somehow, out of place there. And I don't know why that is. I mean, um, I knew I was supposed to go because I didn't want to go. I didn't want want to go very bad. Because I had other things going on and getting in the way. But it's like the Spirit of the Lord had prompted me, you know, you really need to go to Ron's funeral because of Catherine and her daughter and to be a support for them and to let them know that you care. And, and I do very deeply. I'm on the United Methodist Foundation board with Catherine Yarnell. And... Um, so, but yeah, and, and there were a lot of preachers there that I knew and, and all that, but yet I strangely fell out of place. It was like an exile, almost. And I was there in body, but wondering why uh, I was there exactly. And, and I can't put my finger on the strange feeling that I had. I feel like that what God is, or Peter is trying to tell us here, that when you're in these kinds of situations, that it is a good thing to call on the name of Jesus, to call on God, to pray, 
and sort of to run a diagnostic check on your own heart, mind, and soul to make sure your heart is clear and my heart uh, is clear and that uh, we're there with a repentant heart. You know the, the psalm, David created me a clean heart uh, and renew a right spirit within me. I think that's what Peter is trying to tell us to do when we reach out to Jesus and we invoke the name of Jesus as we approach these, uh, whatever you want to call them, these events like this when we feel out of place with reverence and a repentant heart. And don't forget the high price paid on Calvary with the precious blood of Jesus. That was Calvary's way of saying, I love you. That song was uh, so right on for today. So right on for today. You're going to journey through life and good things are going to happen and bad things are going to happen. And uh, there's no straight line uh, in this uh, journey that we call Christianity. But remember, remember these things, that you have God's Word, you have the name of Jesus, and you have the blood of Jesus. And what do you do with that? You love one another like your life depended on. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our final hymn is Living for Jesus in the uh, little black book, the faithfully seen book, number 2121.
depend upon you and give you peace. Oh, <laughs> oh.